Okay, you've got your board all soldered up and you're ready to learn just what the heck is capacitance. What is a capacitor? You've hopefully got your board all set. If you haven't put together your board yet, I highly recommend that you go watch the soldering video and go ahead and get it made. Uh, it's gonna be a lot better if you can use your hands uh, to really demonstrate this concept. That's the point of these boards, is that you can hold something in your hands and really get a sense for what's going on. So first of all, let's look at just what does the board do? We're gonna plug in our nine volt battery. And okay, we've got here some capacitors, uh, a 100 microfarad capacitor, a 470 microfarad capacitor, and a 1000 microfarad capacitor. And we've got a resistor here, an LED, something here that's a little fancy that's called a dip switch. Uh, that's the red box and it's got three little switches on it that uh, if you don't have giant Shrek fingers like I do, you can probably pretty easily uh, switch them on your own. I like to use this little uh, plastic tool because it makes my life a little easier. And then you've got a little button. And you might have, uh, if you have all the switches down and you press the button, oh, the light goes on. That's pretty cool. Bright green light. Kind of hurts to stare at it, so don't. Well, that seems kind of over-engineered. But if we flip on, let's flip on switch number one. What that's doing is it's connecting our 100 microfarad capacitor to the circuit. So now when we hit the button, well, it kind of stays on for a second and then fades out. All right, well, what if we turn on number two? Well, now it stays on for a bit longer, quite a bit longer, actually. And that's because we've got more capacitance. If we flip on number three, well, that stays actually pretty well lit for, for quite some, well, it's still going. It's still on. In fact, it's going to stay on for, for quite a while. See, we can hit the button. We can even unplug the battery. See, it stays lit. Well, okay. So, and we can, you know, turn these off and the LED will go out, but, but the charge is still in these capacitors. So if we flip it on, well, it's, it's still going to light the LED. We can flip on number two and flip on number one. And it's a great concept, but what exactly is going on? Well, to start, Let's talk about what a capacitor is. A capacitor stores electricity. It stores current. Uh, it stores charge. Current is the right word. It stores charge. Uh, you might know something else that does that. Almost any electronic that you use can store charge because it's got a battery. My fancy phone here that I just got has a battery. stores a lot of electricity. The camera I'm recording this with has a battery in it. So why would we use a capacitor? Well, the difference between a capacitor and a battery, a battery charges very slowly. Now, I know what you're saying. Well, my new phone can charge in like 40 minutes. That's pretty fast. And it is pretty fast for a battery. But you see a capacitor, well, let's plug this in again. It charges up so fast. I can hold down this button for, I don't know, five seconds. Yep, it's, it's got a pretty good current. But if I just barely tap it, it charges up just as much. It gets just as much charge from a quick tap as if I just hold it down. In fact, I would wager that you cannot press this button fast enough that the capacitors don't just fully charge. And that is the beauty of them. See, batteries can store a lot of power, but they charge very slowly and they discharge very slowly and predictably, which is great when we need to carry power with us. That's why it's what's powering cell phones everywhere. It's what's powering almost any electronic device, but a capacitor can charge up very, 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 very quickly. And more importantly, it can let all of it charge, all 100% of its charge go, maybe not 100%, but it can let all of that charge go near instantaneously. And in fact, for any hobby electronics, just assume it's instantaneous. There's probably some high-end electronics that you might work on that, you know, the, the milliseconds that it takes to charge actually matter. But for the most part, for our purposes, it's an instantaneous charge. And if needed, an instantaneous discharge. There's some fun videos on YouTube. You shouldn't do this yourself, 
but there's some fun videos to go find where people take like a super capacitor. It's this giant capacitor and we'll hook it up like to a watermelon. And then you just see the watermelon explode when they turn it on. Okay, so a capacitor, for our definition, it holds charge, it holds electricity, like a battery. But unlike a battery, it doesn't hold much. See, this is a lot of space. It doesn't actually hold that much. It can keep this LED lit for like 40 seconds. And a battery the same size could probably keep it lit until like the end of time. So it doesn't hold a ton of charge, but it goes very quickly. And that is important. Now with capacitors, you, you can read it right here on your board. We've got 100 UF. Well, that's actually a micro symbol. It's 100 microfarad. Now let's consider how little that is. Or rather, let's consider how much a farad is. One microfarad. One micro, it looks kind of like a U, farad, is equal to, and I want to make sure I get this right, 0 0.0001 farad. Okay, not much, not much. Now, our big capacitor, this guy right here, it's a thousand microfarad. It's ten times as much, right? That's so much. Uh, and actually, this isn't one microfarad, it's 100. One would be another zero in there. A thousand microfarad, this should be capitalized, by the way. Uh, that is our big guy right here, right? It's, it's sizable, it's a hefty, hefty component. If you've made our series versus parallel board, you get to play with four of them. They're kind of cool, I think. That is 0 0.00. .00 one farad. So you get a sense, based on what these can do, just how much a farad really is. So you're almost always going to work in the microfarad, nanofarad, and even picofarad ranges. There's a lot of different kinds of capacitors. These are electrolytic. These are aluminum capacitors. There's tantalum capacitors. There's ceramic capacitors. There's I think something called like film capacitor. There's all sorts of different kinds of capacitors. This is an introductory level, so we're not going to dive into all of that. But if you're interested in some of that academic stuff, uh, some of the more interesting things, when to use certain kinds of capacitors, there's videos all over YouTube. There are books that you can grab, intro books. There's probably MIT courses that you can take if you really want to go deep in the electronics rabbit hole. But we're going to keep it pretty surface level just for today. So we've kind of talked about what a farad is. We've seen just how far, just how fast these can charge. So the big question is, why in the heck would you use them? Batteries are better, they can hold more charge. Well, we said they're really fast. So one of the ways that we're going to use it, most frequently actually, is something called smoothing, okay? Now when we have a current, or a voltage, let's say we have a five volt system, so that's the voltage, this is time, that's zero volts. Okay, we've got five volts. And it's direct current, so it's constant. Well, that's great. Well, maybe within our schematic, we have, you know, here's our load. And maybe there's some other stuff in here that we'll just write stuff. Okay, but then maybe in our system, let's say it's a camera. And this camera uh, has a flash, and that flash uses a ton of power to create all of that light so that we can get a glorious picture. But when it goes off, it causes the voltage to just drop. But it's very quick, so it drops and then it comes back up. Well, that's not good, because in here, the stuff, right, our integrated circuits, our, uh, our LED, everything that makes, we'll say, our camera work, right? Our sensors. Well, all of that stuff needs probably four to six volts to run. It's never exactly five volts, but it needs basically five volts to run. And when we set off our flash, it just destroys our voltage. Well, what our capacitor can do, the administer capacitor here, Bloop. 
what he can do is store up that current. The moment you turn it on, the capacitors charge. And they hold on to that current, to that charge. And then when the flash goes, it draws all of this current, but the capacitor says, hey, nope, I've got some. So when our power source drops, the capacitor picks up the slack. It can't do this for very long, remember. It doesn't hold a ton, but it's very quick. So when the flash goes off, and remember a flash is very quick, the capacitor picks up the slack, then the flash stops drawing power, and the capacitor can recharge again. I think there's some videos out there that show, uh, show the actual you know, math and the graphs and all that fun stuff. We're not gonna dive too deep into that. I'm not gonna pull out an oscilloscope and start showing you these things. We just want a basic understanding. So the capacitor can smooth, right? Instead of having this very jagged graph, it's doing smoothing. So that is one, probably the most common. You'll see it in systems where you have something that can, for a very brief amount of time, draw a ton of current, or where something is very uh, sensitive to the voltage. If you look at an Arduino, the crystal oscillator uses two 22, I want to say picofarad, but it might be danofarad. It's 22 something uh, uh, capacitors on the crystal because it's, it's a very precise uh, unit. So it, it keeps that a very smooth, steady voltage and current or voltage on the uh, crystal. Okay. The other thing where it's, Probably the most common place that capacitors are used. I have nothing to base that on, but it's just a guess. The, if you're in America, you plug something into the wall, like the lights that are lighting me right now, or the lamp in my bedroom, or anything plugged into the wall, your TV. It's getting 120 volts of AC current. So what does that mean? In a very basic level, we've got 120 volts, we've got zero volts, and 120 volts of direct current would be like that. It's just giving you 120 volts, very simple. But alternating current goes 120 volts, but then it drops. It drops and it drops to zero and it keeps dropping all the way to negative 120 volts. And then it comes back up. And then it goes back down and it creates this wave pattern going from 120 all the way to zero and all the way to negative 120. Now, if you want to do a deep dive on AC versus DC, and I think you should, it's very interesting. You can see some great stuff. Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla had a famous public, uh, not even debate, war about which one was better. Ultimately, alternating current won. Okay, so this is great. But if I take my phone, my fancy phone, well, this will destroy it if I just run this into it for a lot of different reasons. But we need, I need, with my phone, it takes nine volts and it takes direct current. Okay, so how do we fix this? Well, we could just say, okay, well, only draw power when it's at nine volts, but then it'll take about, I don't know, 4,000 years to charge up my battery. So the other thing that we can do, I'm gonna erase this, is we can use something called a bridge rectifier. Now that's gonna use diodes, and then I'll see, we'll see where the capacitors come in. And I'm gonna use my little cheat sheet to draw this, because I always screw it up. So we've got our alternating current here. Then we've got a diode. If you've seen my videos before, you know I am just, just awful at drawing. So, you know, hopefully you give me a little slack. All right, then another diode. It's going to be four diodes, ultimately. Uh, then we've got our negative coming over here. I'm going to draw, this is a resistor symbol, but it represents our load. Whatever is drawing the power. And in the example I used, it's my phone. All right, so this is the negative side, negative side, and then that's gonna go into a third diode, and this goes into a fourth, oh boy, that was, you know what, I'm gonna get my hands dirty and redraw that, because that was bad. 
and our fourth diode. Okay, and this represents our alternating current. Okay, now what we know, at one point, this is 120 volts and this is zero volts. Okay, so in this case, our current goes from here to our rectifier. Okay, it needs to go somewhere, our current. Well, it can only go through this diode because this diode, it can't go backwards. So it goes here to the positive side. Then it goes, does its work, comes back through the negative side, and then it will, it's not gonna go back to the 120 volt system. It's gonna go to the lowest uh, potential, the low voltage. So it's going to flow down here and back to zero volts. But the reason we need this is because the nature of alternating current, it's going to switch. And then this will become zero volts and this will become 120 volts. And yes, I'm oversimplifying this, but bear with me. So this time it'll come this way, goes through our diode here, because it has to go forward through the diode to our positive side, goes to our negative, comes back through, comes up here to the negative. And so now what this has done is it's taken going from 120 volts to negative 120 volts to much more frequently going from 120 volts to zero volts. So 120 volts, zero volts, time. And now it's going down and then when it switches to negative, when it switches to that other side, because of the rectifier, it actually becomes positive voltage again in our system. And so we get this kind of fun loop. And there's some great videos using an oscilloscope where you can see this happening. I'm not an affiliate of Dave Jones or EEV blog, but I think he really dives deep into this. Okay, well, this is, this is better, but we've still got all of these gaps, right? Electronics don't like going from 120 to zero. So what we can do is we introduce capacitors. And so right here, the second the system starts up, they charge, right? They fill up their banks. And then when the, when the voltage starts to drop, the capacitors say, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. And it might dip a little bit, but ultimately it's gonna keep it pretty smooth. And the capacitors just fill in the capacity of the system to keep a nice charge. Now, yeah, it's still at 120 volts and you have to do some stuff to drop it down to nine volts. That's a whole different video. That's a whole different concept. But this is where capacitors I think are probably most used. In fact, if you tear apart any wall wart, the thing that you plug into the wall, you're gonna find a, a bunch of capacitors in there and four diodes at least. Okay, so this is what allows us to convert that AC into DC voltage. It's a very important concept. It can, it can be a little boring sometimes. And if you're bored, then I'd say just grab your capacitance board and just start playing with it again. Thanks for watching and enjoy your electronics journey.